Hey there, my name is Josh Forty, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the top five mistakes entrepreneurs make when it comes to selling. And this is specifically for those entrepreneurs that are out there selling between $1,000 and $15,000 to $20,000 offers. If you're selling $30,000, $50,000, $100,000 offers, this doesn't quite apply just because there's a lot more negotiation that goes on, although it could apply if you're trying to do it in one call. But I believe that if you sell between a $1,000 and $15,000 to $20,000 product, you should be able to sell that in as little as one call. And there's some major, major mistakes that most entrepreneurs that try to sell there make. And I want to go through those top five with you here today. Now, you may be wondering, Josh, why are you qualified to teach this? Well, it's a great question. And uh, over the past three years, I've done over $2.5 million in deals, the average deal being between one and $15,000, which makes me do over, over 250, between 250 and 300 different deals uh, that I have done successfully and uh, have really just analyzed hundreds, if not thousands, of other entrepreneurs' sales formulas and deals. And I'm very uh, much into sales and understanding that. Um, my previous job before I became an entrepreneur was an insurance salesman. I sold insurance to businesses, knocked on 500 doors one summer and made exactly zero sales. I made one sale that entire summer and it came from a referral. And so that made me have to dive into sales and really understand sales psychology and uh, fast forward three years, oh, almost 300 deals and $2.5 million later, here we are. So we're going to dive right into it here. I don't want to waste your time. Top five mistakes that entrepreneurs make when selling. And if you just fix these five things, you will probably double, if not triple, your sales conversion um, just by fixing these things, okay? Number one, and, and here's the thing, okay? I'm gonna go through these things. There's a lot of talk and madness and noise when it comes to sales and the secrets of selling and the secret hack here and the NLP this and this. I'm not trying to get into any of that details. I'm trying to give you actual, basic, actionable things that you can fix right now that you can apply to your business and actually go and make more money, close more deals, and scale your business, okay? I'm not gonna try to teach you some revolutionary new formula. I'm just gonna give you the fundamentals of here it is, here's what to do, and here's how to fix it, okay? So number one mistake that most entrepreneurs make is they talk too much. All right, most entrepreneurs talk like 75% of the time or more when they're on a sales call. And that is exactly backwards, okay? You, what you need to understand is that he or she who talks most on a sales call loses, all right? Whoever talks most loses. See, every single sales conversation or a conversation in general that you enter into, one of two people control the frame, either you or the person that you're trying to sell to. There's always a controller of that frame. And if you're talking a lot, you do not control the frame. You do not control the conversation. You're giving away valuable information when you should be getting valuable information. And it makes your clients or your prospective clients want to get off the phone call quickly. Okay? Do not talk so much. 75% of the time is way too much. You should be talking, well, at least when I when I get on sales calls, I shoot to talk for 30% of the time or less. I want my prospect talking 70% of the time or more because that is going to allow me to get the needed information, control the frame, and successfully close the deal. Okay? So number one, stop talking so much. Let the prospect do the talking for you. Okay? Number two is they think they need all the answers. Now I get this one, okay? Because here's the thing. You're on a sales call, someone's coming and asking you questions, naturally you're gonna think that you need all the answers. And if you don't know what the answer is, you're gonna stumble over your words and get tripped up and freak out and get all nervous. But the fact of the matter is, you do not need to know all the answers to the questions that your prospect has. Obviously, it's good to have a response and good to have an answer for most of them. But when you really understand sales, you have to understand that if you don't have an answer to something, that is okay. That's not going to break the deal. Or that's not going to be the thing that causes the deal not to go through. And if you're honest about that and you talk through the situation together, you're going to have a lot more success, okay? So, so many people get so caught up in trying to have to know all the details and all the features and every answer about everything. Most of the time, it's not needed, okay? In fact, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who his company does over a half a million dollars per month 
in sales. And he says that some of his top salespeople know almost nothing about the product. They just understand the person. And when you really connect with the person emotionally, a lot of the questions that they have, you can get answers to later, even after the deal is closed um, and still be able to have a successful deal. So if you don't have an answer to something, don't freak out, don't get tripped up over your words, continue with the conversation and just be honest with them and be like, listen, I don't know the answer to that. Here's what I do know. We can get you that answer and, and you know, give them a timeline when you can get that answer over back to them. Most of the time, not knowing the answer to something does not actually kill the deal, okay? Number three, number three is they talk about the product, all right? Now you might be thinking, well, Josh, don't I need to talk about my product or service and tell them all about it, all these amazingly cool features? No, you don't. See, here's the thing. We as entrepreneurs, we're obsessed with our product. We love what we do and we want to sell more of it, whether it's an agency service or a, a service of any sort or a course, a digital product, physical product, whatever it is. We want to talk all about how amazing it is and all the features and all the work we've, that we've gone into it. But here's the thing. None of that matters. The trick is, is that instead of going and telling the, the, your prospect all about all the amazing things that your feature can do for them, you need to listen to what it is that they're saying because at the end of the day, they don't care what the product can do. They only are caring about a result. There's a reason that they are there. And when you're talking all about your features, you're just gonna overwhelm them. So instead, if you shut up, like what I talked about back in number one, and ask questions and start listening to what it is that they're saying, they're gonna tell you the things that are important to them. And if they have questions about the features, they will ask you. Okay, so what you do is you listen to them, you connect with them emotionally. Remember, people buy into people, people buy into status, people buy into certainty. They don't buy into the product, they buy into what the product can do for them, what you can do for them. People buy from people. And so if you can make an emotional connection to them and really understand their needs well, then when it comes to talking about your product, all you really have to say is, yes, I have a solution that's going to work for you. Are you ready to get started, right? Are you ready to move forward? And then they're gonna come back to you and go, you know what, what about this? Hey, does it do this? Hey, does it do this? And sometimes they might ask 10 or 15 questions and you might have to provide 10 or 15 answers about the product. But most of the time, they need like one or two or three questions answered and then they're good to go. And if you try to overwhelm them with all the features, it's just gonna confuse them. Whereas if you wait for them to ask the question, you give them the exact information that they need, you have a much better chance of actually closing the deal. So don't talk about your product, shut up and listen, and really focus on making a connection with them and understanding what it is that they're actually after and what it is that they're actually buying into, okay? All right, number four. Number four, and this is a big one, okay? I, I, I have struggled with this for years, and I think many, many people do as well, is they get nervous when stating the price. All right, how many times have you gone in for a sale and you've gotten super, super nervous when it comes to the price? They'll ask you, they'll be like, well, how much is it? And you're not quite ready for it yet, but they've asked, so you just gotta go and you gotta state it. And you realize that it's a lot of money, maybe it's 3,000, 5,000, $10,000, and that's a lot of money for you, right? And so you get nervous around it, maybe your hands get all sweaty or you start to shake, you start to tremble, you start to really trip over your words, and then you say the price and you're like, ah, oh, man, that just came out so wrong, okay? Here's the thing. A lot of times when that happens, without even realizing it, the first thing that we do when we state the price is we try to go justify the price. And we think that the only way that someone is actually gonna buy from us is if we state the price and then immediately like give them a discount or offer a payment plan or bring the price down or something else. We're trying to justify what it is. When in reality, when we just state the price confidently and we've gone through and we've done these other things successfully, they're ready to buy now. Most of the time, even on a five or $10,000 deal, when you state the price, most of the time there's just a, maybe one or two objections left. Um, and so when people, when you do it correctly, right? So people get all nervous around the price and your prospect hears that in your voice. Your prospect hears, wow, they're nervous. Wow, they don't think it's worth that as well. And so they're gonna be able to negotiate you down. And so if you get nervous about the price, it's really, really hard to stand firm. And when you go and try to justify the price or offer a discount, it's really, really hard to stand firm. And one of the best things that one of my sales mentors taught me was, when you state the price, you state the price, you state it firm, clearly, concisely, and then you shut up. And then you wait for them to actually reply. And if they have a problem with the price, you simply go back and you start to point back to the things that they were after. And when you listen really carefully about what it is that they're actually after and what they're doing, then you can just be like, well, 
is this price worth it to you to do X, Y, Z, and continually tying it back to that. And then if they still don't budge, rather than giving a discount, we like to add in more things. So if it's $10,000 and they don't see the value, well then up what they're getting and add more to it rather than discounting the price because you don't want to have to ever justify the price to someone. You want to state it, state it firm, and really understand that that's what it is. This takes a lot of practice. There's definitely ways to get over this, but this is one of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make, okay? All right, number five, last but not least, and this is a mistake that I see almost no Buddy talking about and nobody teaching. And if you really go and you study some of the top salesmen in the world and really look at what they're doing, the people that are really successful, they're all doing this, but very few people are teaching it. And that is number five, they handle objections. Oops, handle objections before, I'm sorry, after, after the price. Now you might be thinking, well, Josh, when else would you handle objections, right? Like I've got to state the price in order for them to have an objection for it. And that is not true. Okay. See most entrepreneurs and most salespeople, what they're going to do is they're going to go through, they're going to listen to the person, have that initial conversation. They're going to brag on their product. They're going to say how amazing it is. Then the person's going to ask for the price. You're going to state the price. You're going to get all nervous and then you're going to freak out. The prospect is going to hear that. They're going to have all these objections and then you're going to be stuck in defensive mode and trying to overcome objection, overcome objection, overcome objection over and over and over and over again, rather than just closing the deal and moving forward. When you do sales correctly, you should be able to handle almost all of your objections before the price is ever stated. In fact, the only objection, the single only objection that should ever be present after the price is stated is the objection of price. Every single other objection should already be taken care of. And that's like 90 to 95% of objections. Most people, when they, like I said, they'll state the price and then they'll handle all the objections. What I like to do and what I teach in all of our sales training programs is you've got to handle the objections before the price is ever stated. Because if you can do that, now you've gotten a verbal agreement and you've gotten them to agree that everything else makes sense before you ever state the price. And that way, if you state the price and it's way too high for them, you can point back and say, listen, every other objection that you have is taken care of. Everything else we're in agreement with. Let's move forward. We can figure out a way to make this price work. Because now 80 or 90% of them is already sold. You're only negotiating on one thing. And that's why I really encourage you to take care of objections before you ever handle the price. One simple question that I like to ask is one of the most powerful questions in sales is, all right, listen, before I get to the price and I know you want that and we're going to get to that, I've got to ask you, is there any other reason that I wouldn't or that you would not invest with me today as long as we can come to an agreement on the price? What have I just done there? I've asked them a question. I've given them the illusion of control in the sales conversation and I've allowed them to tell me exactly what their objections are and I can handle every single one of those things simply by listening before the price is ever stated, okay? And when you do that, you're gonna close so many more deals. These are the top five things that most entrepreneurs make uh, when they're trying to sell things. They talk too much. They think they have to have all the answers. They talk about the product rather than listening to the customer themselves. They get nervous when stating the price instead of standing firm, and they try to handle objections after the price is revealed. All these things are wrong. You gotta do the exact opposite of these things if you want to do that successfully. And the key to doing that is to be able to follow a sales script that follows sales psychology, all right? Most people don't follow a script at all, and if they do follow a script, it does not follow sales psychology. It doesn't understand the patterns of a buyer, the methods of persuasion, and that's why it's so critically important to follow a sales script. Every single sales conversation that I've gotten on, I've always followed a script, and I've continuously updated it over and over and over again over the past several years in order to make it just perfect. Make sure you're selling with the script so that you can analyze what went right, what went wrong, all right? If you liked this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. Hit me up in the comments on Instagram, uh, at Josh40, and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts back on this, but I hope this helped. This was amazing, uh, or this is some really good information here that I've learned over the past three years and $2.5 million and almost 300 deals later. If you have any questions, let me know, and I will see you on the next video.